Hi, it's Cypher Freddy here. So after placing my order with Gearbest for the AlphaWise U30, a couple of weeks later, I was looking at U30 U20 modifications, and I noticed Michael from Teaching Tech Channel had done a review on the U30 that wasn't around when I was originally placing my order. And unfortunately, his review didn't give the U30 a lot of praise. In fact, he really did slate it at times. Obviously I had placed my order and was now bricking it, thinking that I've ordered the wrong 3D printer. This isn't to slate his review in any way and to be honest, I'm not too sure why they didn't test the machine before sending it to him. I know if I was sending a YouTuber with a lot of subscribers a machine to review, I would have personally made sure the machine was running perfectly before I shipped it. I guess he can only review what was given and to be honest, I have a lot of respect for a review like this. But for me it kind of left me worried and I thought that maybe some other people might be feeling the same or in the same situation. So I thought I'd do a quick review on the U30 and how I've been getting on with it. Now it's been about a month since I started mine up so hopefully if you've ordered yours within that time span you would have received yours and all is good. Let us know. So following in order of the contents I will start off with the assembly. I've never assembled a 3D printer before and this was my first time of owning and even touching a 3D printer. So I was a little bit nervous, but with a little help from some other YouTube videos on how to assemble it, mainly Sandtube 3D and Ozdai PhD, apologies if I've spelt your name wrong, I managed to put the 3D printer together really quickly. Though Sandtube 3D did say that you can put the belt on anywhere you like, but I felt he kind of put it on the wrong way around, purely because the two smooth sides together when you put a zip tie around it, it may allow for some slippage, but if you used to put it so the two teeth sort of interlink together um, and then put the zip tie around it, this should help prevent the belt from slipping. The links for these videos are down in the description, but yes, I totally agree that the instructions are not that great. Luckily, I checked all my parts and there was nothing that was bent in the box. With the amount of packaging it come in, I wouldn't have expected it to be either. I also had a 3D printed shroud that didn't have the support removed, but this was my first time of removing support material and I was kind of uh, cheekily looking forward to it. The only thing I can think of is they cut a few corners to save on some money like a uh, LCD screen and the filament run out sensor. I also had a few holes that had been drilled by the factory that also had a few chips left in place but to me this wasn't too much of a problem as a little flick from the end of a screwdriver broke them off but I can understand how this could be annoying and really shouldn't have been there. But what I did find was it appeared that the 3D printer had been put together before. There was a few little marks where the two parts fitted together and when I started up the printer, as it heated up, some black filament oozed out the end of the nozzle. This worried me thinking that maybe it had been a return unit that had been repaired and then sent back out for shipping. My first 3D print was also the bullet, Zidane, purely because it had a small amount of time to print. I noticed that the slight over extrusion on the tip of the bullet, but mine had a bit of an ellipse to it as well. So after a little bit of googling it turned out that all that was needed was for me to tighten up the belt on the X axis. After that I printed a square box and everything appeared fine. My benchy came out quite well too I thought. It had a little artifact on the bow, but apart from that, I was very pleased with it. I believe the poor print qualities might have something to do with the software when they sliced the files, and then when they put the G code onto the USB. My Benchy was done on Idea Maker, um, and I've tested out a few other free slicers out there, and between Slicer with a free Idea Maker and Cure, the latter needed more adjustments to get anywhere near the same quality as the other two straight from the install, where the others worked without too much tweaking. Idea Maker uses slightly more filament than Slicer. Unfortunately, I didn't video the data from this, but I may redo the test at a later point. Now for the bit I was more worried about, the lowering the voltage reference on the stepper and it catching fire. Now, luckily this didn't happen on mine, and the only time the extruder gear goes forwards and then back some is because I've set the retraction settings up a notch to pull back some of the filament in between moving. I haven't had the need to adjust the voltage reference, but later on I might take a look at it and note it down for future reference, just to see what the outputs are and to see if they are in spec for the motors. So now onto my Benchy. I have the smallest amount of Z-bending and also a little bit of Zebra salmon skinning, but again only very slightly. 
I bought some TL smoothers to fit in line between the drivers and the motors. I will do tests on this later to see if these help. But for the price I really can't complain. I know it's being compared to the slightly more expensive Ender 3. And I have noticed that there's a wealth of mods that's been done to the Ender 3. So I think it's only fair to expect a few mods and tweaks needed to be done to the U30. But he did say in his own words, the best parts of this boat are quite good and the worst parts of this boat is quite average. So I kind of guess that's a good thing. Now for the bad bits, so the thermal run away protection is quite a serious point he made and I will be looking into this a bit further. And hopefully this is just going to be an update that's going to be needed to be done by Gearbest um, that they could send out for the printer. So I actually quite like it that it's up on stilts. I like how the power supply is tucked away, but yes, the USB port at the back is uh, quite annoying. I've already purchased a USB extender for a few quid, and if you look on Thingiverse, there's quite a few files for accessories for the U30 already. I currently have mine facing sideways at the moment. This is because the depth of the machine is bigger than the area that I have to put it on. But that makes getting to the USB a little bit easier. I was going to build a table with a little enclosure for the top but after watching his review I just wanted to get it built and tested just to see if I was going to have to send it back. The ribbon cable is also true in being it's a bit too long and getting in the way but again Thingiverse there's a few little attachments and clips on there that will help you keep it out of the way. I quite like that it's long because when I make the enclosure for it I may want to put the controller or the LCD box outside. So the actual length for me may become a positive. I totally agree with the bed. It was great for the first couple of prints. Then the old scraper that I had been using and my brute force trying to get the prints apart indentated the top. So I flipped it over and so far I've just been printing on glass. No hairspray, no nothing. Just make sure it's nice and clean and wiped over with some rubbing alcohol and then you can really get a nice glass finish on the bottom. So whilst the design changes have changed from the end of three, Allowing you not to use most of the modded 3D parts from the Ender 3 on the U30, I'm sure it's not going to be long before there's more STL files on Thingiverse for the U30. And if you have a look on Thingiverse, there's already a little following for the U30 and more so the U20. I also will be uploading a few things that I've printed out so far, but feel they need a little bit more attention before going public. So, here are a few things that I've printed. Obviously, we've got the Benchy. I also printed out a filament holder. As you can see, it wasn't completely glossy and glass-like on the bottom as I was still experimenting. Remember, I was a 3D printer virgin before the U30 took my cherry. I've also been printing some 3D parts to make a printer enclosure for ABS and plastics that needs a heated enclosure. I printed a little attachment that goes onto the print head so I can put a dial test indicator on and use it to see how level a surface is. So just a quick review, just in case you have brought yours and you're kind of worried or you're thinking about buying a U30. I have printed just under a roll of filaments I got cheaply from eBay and so far I have to admit I'm very impressed and I'm actually quite addicted. So I hope this put a few questions to rest and stay tuned for some further U30 modifications and prints.